This is Courtney. I play McKenna Ali, your favorite Loxodon. Well, let's be honest, your favorite character. I want to thank you for joining us on this adventure. Starlight has taken a lot of love from all four of us, and from the bottom of our hearts, we are so thankful. Every review, every subscribe, every Patreon subscriber, or in any way that you give back to Starlight means the world to us. And in case you didn't know, each reading or review helps reveal our podcast for those finding new podcasts and adventures to go on. I truly hope you enjoy the venture ahead. Until next time, see you later, spacers. Hey, welcome to Starlight, guys. And this time, a month later, Courtney's finally here with the intro. And welcome to Starlight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm super glad you're here. And um, McKenna is ready to um, to try to persuade these police officers not to uh, kill them. Yeah. Good. And I think Alice will be persuaded to try to kill them. So may the odds be ever in our favor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, good intro. <laughs> Yeah, I like that little recap and intro, um, and I don't think I can do better than that. So, without further ado, I'm Isaac, your host. We have Courtney uh, playing McKenna, and we have Nathan Koontz playing Atlas. Let's jump into the sci-fi action and find out what's going to happen. <clears throat> Neuralink, access memories. Accessing. After a short but intense confrontation with Gorn. Guardian of the Sunmaker's secret and caretaker from Nanoi's hidden temple of the way. The spacers limp their way back to Nanoi, with only two of their three speeders working. After Gorns and his remaining allies destroyed one of their vehicles and trashed the second, they split from Clive Jensen with the promise to meet back up in the city after some time to regroup. Agreed, McKenna and Atlas pilot their way back into town towards Thyra's base of operations. That thought, however, is cut short as the local protectorates give chase calling for the vehicle boosters to pull over. Memories retrieved. Who would you guys weigh in to vote for inspiration? I mean, Clive or Atlas? Clive's not here. So yeah, Atlas, put down. only because Clive had saved Atlas, is what I was thinking. Oh, but yeah. Atlas, I was going to say, I got put down, so... What did you say? Can you say it a little bit louder? Oh, I said I got put... What? You got what? <laughs> yeah. What happened? I had to take a short rest. Yeah, you <laughs> got took a knee. your ass kicked. Let's just be honest. <laughs> I took a knee. Okay, you know what happened before that. There was more fighting than just those guys, okay? <clears throat> you weren't there Alex for my Hercules, put, Hercules yeah, moment. Can you put that part on repeat? Like, when you go to put this live, can you just put, I got put down on repeat over and over again? Yeah, I can do that. Say, I got put down. Say, I got put down. Say, I got put down. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, then we come to, the camera pans in on... Uh, McKenna's eyes, these wizened elephant eyes, and she, they like glance down. That's all the camera can see is just like the eyes and kind of the age lines on them. And they look down, look back up straight at the camera, look down, you see the eyebrows kind of raise in worry. And then the camera then follows her eye gaze down to the speedometer as uh, her hand kind of grips the sides of the speeder and you hear the engine kind of rev just a little bit lightly. She looks into the mirror and we see lights flashing behind. Uh, and again, we hear a PA system as the police yell out, pull over. And then we flip over 
to Atlas, who is like gritting his teeth. And he does the same thing where he kind of revs the engine just a little bit, kind of like looking at McKenna, seeing what the move's going to be. Also already deciding his own move. And as he revs it, there's a big gout of black smoke that goes out the back of his vehicle. Some circuitry popping, the speedometer spinning three times around. You guys find yourself going into the outskirts of Minoy. There's some basic buildings up ahead. Um, you can see like you're moving into a small villa of some mm-hmm. sort. Uh, the you have moved off of like regular float, like floating over like the actual ground onto the uh, lifted platforms that keep the city from crumbling from the many earthquakes. Uh, and you guys see like the kind of Durostil walkway, some buildings on the side. There is a statue in the center with a little bit of like water kind of spouting out of like these four trouts on either side um and you can see as the sirens of the uh police speeder behind you grow louder and louder uh faces start to press up against the windows as you guys rocket past shaking the glass i was gonna pop he's gonna pop two painkillers his last painkillers you kind of crunch down on them kind of the same bitter acrid taste as they kind of coat your your tongue and that's where the the numbness starts and kind of works its way down your throat uh and then you let go of the capsule the capsule kind of catches in the air and it floats backwards and slams on the police uh speeders like window shield and the wiper blade comes up and moves it off the side and there's just this small um halfling woman piloting it a thick goggles on her face, eyes squinted, big frown furrowed. Prior to doing anything, I'm going to alter self and cast a spell on myself. And I am going to become a very large woman because I can't change my actual size. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I am going to become a human with the same voice um with long hair um and very feminine traits just very 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 large like think 200 375 pounds seven foot six inches is this muscle or is this like table muscle muscle? it's muscle okay like yeah it's muscle um atlas can you roll a perception roll (laughs) <laughs> As these nanobots are coming out of McKenna and like changing her facade. Uh, perception, the 19 plus something. Okay, you you actually kind of pull up slightly to the side <laughs> and you like do a double take. As you watch, it's almost like watching her getting covered by like small little insects. Think like the quarter the size of locusts that coat the side of her and then they like reflect and change so that it like covers her in like this image. I am also just one more thing. My nails are very, very, very long and almost they, they are claws, but they look like nails for the record. Um, but other than that, I'm pulling over. Alice, what are you doing? <laughs> First being shocked. How many cops did you, could, I t- could I tell how many officers are in there? I can see two. two. One seems to be some sort of like human sized and one is like diminutive in shape. That was a pull over. Out of your vehicles, get down, put your hands on on the side of the vehicles, on your knees. Uh, I'm so sorry, what's going on? And I'm listening, but also looking very shocked and super frantic. I'm I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. He's just gonna kinda get off and like uh, light a cigarette and just stand there. Not listening, just kinda waiting. 
they are carrying uh, what appear to be like um, stun spears. The end of the spear is exactly built the same way as your burst axe is, where it the tip opens up and you realize that they, they are they are burst spears, and they are leveled straight at you. One of them kind of says something into the side of a com, like a comlink secure channel. We're going to need back up here, uh, Sector 5-4. We have the bombers in our site. Bombers? Bombers? I'm, I'm a bomber? And I'm like really frantic but still on the ground. I'm, I'm not a bomber. Who said I was a bomber? These are the vehicles that were lifted and hidden away after the bombing in the House of Roses. What? Put your hands on the wall. And then both of them kind of like raise the spear at you, Atlas, and they seem to be kind of holding their distance as you guys can see more of, like, at least two or three more vehicles coming in the distance, like, kind of waiting to come forward, but keeping their weapons in, like, a lethal uh, line of sight. We, who bombed what? I'm what? sorry. I, I seem to have missed that memo. What bombing was there? I want you to make a charisma roll. Uh, 21. Ah, ah, you know about the bombing. Don't you go and lie to us, you filthy animal. A animal? You drove this vehicle right up here. Do you have proof that it was me? Is there camera footage? You'll get your proof in court. But is there cameras that are going to be shown in court? Because I'm certain you won't see such a g gorgeous woman doing such a thing. Well, we'll just see. For right now you got some explaining to do if you're not involved in this and happening to have these vehicles on you. Both of you. It's the cowboy. Alice is going to start walking towards him. Slowly, though. He's not going to like make anything aggressive or anything. So you can hear the sounds of vehicles coming closer. Uh, you kind of glance over it and you see someone draw the shades to their window. Uh, again, now both of them uh, point the spears at you and they, one of them fires a shot over the side of your shoulder as a warning shot and says, do not take another step. You've been warned. Alice is gonna take off his like jacket and like toss it over to McKenna or the overly thick woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he's just gonna like slowly keep walking up to him. I work for the Acers. I think that that falls under an intimidation. Roll right. unless you think it's more of a persuasion. Intimidation. He's gonna get himself killed. Nineteen. The man kind of like falters back. The halfling woman spits on the ground and fires a bolt. Acers, huh? You coming to our town to bring up trouble? No, he just brought his girlfriend on a little trip here no. to Illinois. No. <laughs> I'm here on business. <laughs> I'm here Alice on business. Alice here. Atlas. There's no reason to deny what we've had for so long. I'm just gonna keep talking to them and just ignoring McKenna B. I'm just gonna like keep slowly walking towards them with my hands in my pockets. Just normal strut, stretching out the neck, you know. I'm here on business and like right now I'm not in the best of moods. So if you get in my way, I will just kill all of you. We really just came for a nice little trip. My friend here specializes or thinks she specializes in deception. She's working with me on this assignment. De deception? Uh, I want you to go ahead and make one more intimidation roll against both of them. Damn, it was so close to being super good. I got a nine. They hold their resolve. There's a step backwards, and the woman kind of steals her voice, but you can hear like a slight kind of quiver. Dustin, report that. And she takes the step in front of him, and as he starts to reach for his kind of like communication device, you hear him start to say that they, they have reasonable belief that the Acers are involved. With the bombing? 
Well, I'm already, I'm already knee deep, so I just keep going. I'm gonna click my spear, and I'm gonna get in my hand as soon as it like extends. I'm gonna launch that thing in between them at the car, like the hood of the car, and try to like impale the vehicle, just to scare them into knowing that I'm like serious. I want Courtney uh, to go ahead and roll a percentile die. Oh no! And they can see part of my tattoo because of like turning my body. Oh yeah, they can. <laughs> Eight. Go ahead and roll one more intimidation roll uh, with that. Oh my god, that twenty plus two. And you launch it right oh, the at the vehicle, where it lands. It, you have no idea what it hits, but the vehicle, it just hit like the right spot. And like, s ridiculous movie style, the vehicle erupts. It shoots in all direction, throwing both officers to the sides. One of them getting fully covered by a, a grating. Atlas yourself, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> I got an out one. Alice, Plus one, two. You are thrown to the side, and oh, that is 19 points of damage. It's not 18? No. Oh. I'm at zero. The flames erupt, sending metal in all directions. Atlas, you are actually shocked by what you just saw. <laughs> I just uh, thought I was going to impale the vehicle. I didn't know it was going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> and you get thrown to the side by the force of it. You feel the pain well up inside of you to the point of like you're fighting off, passing out. And the last thing to click off is there is the uh, rear view mirror that goes shunk, 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 <laughs> through the air and hits you on the side of the head. Oh. <laughs> and you hear someone scream from behind a window. Ah! Uh, and McKenna, your mouth just drops. And you see that you have probably about 90 seconds before the other three police vehicles are upon you. Okay. I'm gonna get up and push my hand off and say, oh, there goes Atlas again, out strengthening himself. And I'm just gonna go over to him and pick him up like, like a loving, Child. Okay, make a perception roll. Um, and then I'm just gonna sit down with him, and I'm not doing anything intimidating. Two sixteen. You see a flash of light come from one of the windows. You see a child who is taking video footage of everything that just transpired. You you watch as it catches everything that was seen, catches you saying his name. And <laughs> how far away is this window? <laughs> I mean is, the. It's 20 feet. Like, uh, they cannot hear me saying his name. You gotta hate kids nowadays 20 with their not cameras. That far. I feel like 20 I didn't say it loudly. Okay. I am going, I want you to roll a... a whisper check. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? You get to play GM for a second. Okay. You can, based on the difficulty, give me something between 14 and 18 as a DC. 18. 18. Oh! <laughs> Bullshit! Bullshit! <laughs> oh. Uh, and the, the, oh. you see another flash of light as it zooms in on your face <laughs> and then on Atlas. I don't look like me though. And just as you, as you look back, you see someone grab the boy and pull him back and close the shades. Oh. I'm gonna message into his mind, that little boy, and say, that video is very valuable. Make sure only you and you alone have it. Make a persuasion roll. <laughs> 14. 14. Okay. He's a little boy. He's easy to persuade. Yeah, maybe. But kids maybe. with cameras? Come on. <clears throat> like, they're they're a motivated viral. <laughs> then you just sit there and wait for the police to show yeah. up. Yeah. No, I'm not doing anything. Okay. So they all circle around you. Uh, the vehicle's completely surrounding you and Atlas, holding you in. Uh, it's one of those situations where you have all the spotlights shining in on your face and <laughs> so you can't bad. see like anything. Himself. You just hear weapons being cocked and you just hear multiple yells telling you to put yourself on the ground. You are eventually cuffed. You are 
thrown into the back of one of the vehicles. Atlas is separated away from you. I've done nothing to prove that I am in an issue, and I would like to stay with my boyfriend, please. Make a persuasion roll. Oh, it's that one. You didn't think that one through when you went and killed two of our own. I think we're going to have lots of fun learning what it's like to be on the shit end of things. That was not me. I did not kill him. That was Atlas, and he tends to do this with his strength, and he doesn't realize how strong he is. And this is an issue that we're working on. There's been some incidents between him and I where he just is too strong. Well, you complete your innocence when you're also trying to plead for the fact that you didn't bomb the House of Roses now, won't you? And the door shuts in your face. Atlas, go ahead and make a life or death saving throw. King it now. I got 11 again. You are going in and out of consciousness. Every once in a while you see the flash of lights. Um, someone's shining a flashlight in your eye. They kind of lift open the lid. And you hear just faintly, Yeah, oh, that's not right. He is an acer. Check out the tattoo. Oh, shit. Acers are involved with this. Oh. Protector Loomston's gonna have a field day with this. God damn it. Throw him in the back. Make sure the hands are bound. Both the feet as well. I want him muzzled. You'd never know what these you know, freaking berserker. Keep this under lock and key. We don't want this getting out there. You don't know who's sympathetic and who's not. Atlas, will you make a uh, die 100 roll? And we're looking for higher than 40%. Fifty. You hear someone say, Look, he's bleeding out. Yeah, well, I think we just leave it, don't you? Well, there's nothing we can say if he just passes out in the back of the car. And then you hear someone else say, well, That's not how justice is done. I want to see his sniveling face when they put him on the execution block. And you can feel hands start to kind of patch you up and stabilize you. Everything starts to fade to black. The last thing that is seen as you leave the scene is the smoldering fire of the police vehicle and the face of the child peeking back out the window. Get out of shot! Oh man. So you are thrown into the cell. It's a sterile white cell, and one side is has just like an energy like wall. Uh kind of like uh almost looks like plasma or like like but you know well enough that like if you tried to push your way through it, it would disintegrate part of your body. Um there is nothing in the room except for a single blanket and a bucket. Uh, and Atlas, you are thrown into a, a deprivated room. There is no, it's essentially you've been put in the hold and it's completely black. And except for like a single pinpoint of light that comes through like a little portal uh, so that they can like check in on you. It is neither big enough to stand. You can like hunch over in there and you kind of feel around and you touch something cold and you kind of raise your hand and you realize that it's like leftover excrement from whoever was in there before you. Oh. There's no bucket, no nothing. McKenna, the sterile white room outside of the energy plasma beam, you can see like a hallway and you can see like a few other people that have been placed in these temporary jail cells. Uh, there is a single guard on the far end uh, beside like a sliding door. He's kind of just standing on edge there, like keeping an eye on everything, looking rather bored. Um, you can't make out hair or eye color because of the helmet with the visors, but the lips are like a thin pink, kind of like stretched thin 
from someone who has spent too much time pursing their lip. Um, you've been stripped of all of your items. Um, everything. Um, e- excuse me? Is anyone there? Make a charisma roll. Twelve? Yeah! What do you want? Um, I was walking down the sidewalk, and then all of a sudden, I was here. I think some kind of magic was done to get me here. (laughs) Magic? Oh, sir. The guard can't see you from where he is. Well, like, he can. Like, you're kind of, like, Does at the he, edge. Like, see that I don't look like the person who was in here? He hasn't bothered really looking your direction. He's just kind of, like... It's like you're, like, sidling to the very far edge to see, and even then it's just, like, your eye kind of, like, peeking out to try and see. Like, you're really craning to see him, and you would assume that he needs to kind of do some of the same, potentially. Um, and then he goes, Ah... Why don't you save it for your day tomorrow? We already told you the last time you complained. And you will be questioned and proven guilty then. Can... Um... Magic. Can I talk to someone or can you send someone? Because I really... I I don't know how I got here. I want you to go and make a persuasion roll. Seven. Uh, you don't know how you got there. Can he at least walk over here? No. <laughs> you used magic nope. to end up in here. What is this, a fairy tale? Okay. Where, oh yes, you have magic. And the fairy godmother exists too, and the tooth fairy. I see how this is not um, believable, but maybe when you get a chance you can come down here. Because I, I really am, I'm, I'm, Confused. Make one last persuasion check with disadvantage. Nine. Yeah. Well, heard that trick far enough. I tell you what. I'll come say hi to your ugly thick mug mm-hmm. in... Oh, I don't know. About when it's time to give you your dinner. Which isn't for a few more hours. Oh, Okay. And I'm going to start crying. Like, sobbing. (laughs) We cut back over to Atlas, and uh, quite a bit of time has passed, and you can kind of feel like still some of the ache. Uh, All of your effects have been taken as far as you know um every once in a while the light on um, coming through the door or wall kind of like disappears assuming that someone's like looking in checking in on you and after uh let's say like a few hours there is a voice that kind of fills the room like a like a tin can being lit by um some built-in speakers Name, prisoner, state. And then repeats. Name, prisoner, state. What do you want? Archives. Putting down name, prisoner, and state. Atlas. I don't know why I'm a prisoner. And I work for the Acers. Atlas. Running records. Database. There's a sound of like whirring of machines. Incompatible with archives. Acers. Deadly organization. <laughs> and and then <laughs> uh, confirmed by tattoo. 
Berserker! And then it cuts off. And you hear another voice. This time uh, appears to sound to be like a human speaking over. So, Atlas, the Acer sends someone to take out a wing of the House of Roses. Why? That wasn't the mission I was sent on. That's not, and that wasn't what my party was doing. Oh? And what were you doing? Because the footage that we have is of the very vehicles you used being parked into a loading zone at the House of Roses. The people that we saw were concealed and were carrying packages in. Shortly after, there was an explosion from the quadrant in which they had spent time at. The vehicles then were taken. Suddenly they show back up with you. Ahead of that, we have a citizen's report that they were being chased by the bombers of the House of Roses. So what were you doing, if not that? If your witnesses, supposedly, saw us, then I'm pretty sure they would have gave you a description of what the bombers look like. I'm 99% sure they didn't say anything near what both myself and my party look like. Hmm. Well, you do have me there. You are missing the man who wears a brimmed hat, but you are the tattooed, fur-collared berserker. And the other part that doesn't match up is the woman, your girlfriend. That's not my girlfriend. Oh, okay. Well, then perhaps you can tell us where the elephant was who helped you do the bombing. One, again, I didn't do the bombing. And the elephant that I was, that's in my party, also, as far as I know, was not a part of the bombing either. Are you talking about the explosions? Or the vehicle explosion? Or the explosion at the House of Roses? Oh, well, that's also something I'd like to get into. Why exactly you attacked our officers, if you were so innocent. It is some very handy military expertise to know how to destroy a vehicle like that. One hit, I can't see it. I've ever seen anything like it. So, bravo. But there will be blood for this. And that I do have exact proof. A video brought in by one of our citizens. I can probably say that the video was probably skewed in some sense. It seems like what everyone does with the news channels or viral videos nowadays, but the reason I blew up the vehicle is because your untrained officers, after I showed no aggression, told them that I worked for the Acers and tried explaining the situation and started firing at me. So, like you said, due to my military training, I launched my spear at their vehicle and disabled it. Well, bravo. We could talk more later. If you can get me out of this hole, and we can talk like normal business individuals, then I'll share the information that I can. But as of right now, I'm not too comfortable. I want you to go ahead and roll a persuasion roll. Three. Three. We will be in touch, Atlas. I do have many questions I wish to ask you before you are brought before other authorities voice kind of cuts back as if it had been purposely overriding the machine. Atlas, Acer, archived. How can I make your stay more comfortable? <laughs> Get me out of the hole. Access, denied. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> we um, cut back to McKenna. McKenna. At some point, you hear the sounds of, there's like a, like a faint ring, like a ding. There's a door sliding open. Ooh, chow's looking good, isn't it? Oh yeah. Fish heads left over from today's catch. Ooh, 
Not two days old? Yeah, they're eating like champs. Here you go. Um, excuse me. What the? Who? Oh! I'm so glad you're shocked to see me here too, because I have no clue how I got here. The fish. And I'm still crying. It's literally a fish head with like the, the bones still left in it. It clatters to the ground with some gravy sauce and some sort of like red juice. And he goes, Hey! What'd you do with the girl? So I was walking down the street and then it's like this fog came over me and then and then I was here. She's lying and what you hear the footsteps of the other officers, he comes around and it's What? I uh, told you You watch as their eyes kinda glaze over as they as they start to try and like hack into your neural link to figure out what's going on. I sneeze and try to get like their attention like distracted so they have to do it again. I want you to do a performance roll to see if you can get them to roll with disadvantage. Uh, eight. So you zoom <laughs> and you send spit all over the wall, the wall sizzles <laughs> and their eyes kind of like glaze back over and shake their head and they go, oh, well that's fancy. That makes a whole lot more sense than Technomancer. You can see the change in the coating. Tech. What? I think. I think I must have been hacked. If you're seeing technomancy, that can't be true. And he looks at you, kind of furrows his brow. In second thought, don't give her the food. So starve me is the answer. No. Cool. If you do like, really believe that you were hacked and had your memories altered or the coding altered to appear one way, that's a bit of a danger for me and my companion, wouldn't you say? Especially if you are the alleged bomber or not. I'm not opening that wall up for you to see if you can do something else. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Bomber? They just look at you, look at each other, shake their heads and just go, silver tongue. <laughs> and they walk away. Bonner. And uh, you just catch the last bit. Is, is, yeah, you go report that to the boss. Yeah. Why don't you actually go do that? Uh, you, I gotta clean this up anyways. The original guard looks at his watch as the other person says that and he goes, Do you see Vandal? Yeah, he's just out there waiting for you. Yeah. He was, honestly, he's been talking to his missus for a while. You should probably go pull him in if you're going to switch positions soon. You've been up on duty for a while. Yeah, you're right. You keep things down in the fort here. Well, Van will be in in a second. And you see as the original guard walks up the stairs and presses the button and walks through as the door slides shut behind him. Um, the other guard who brought the food in uh, starts cleaning it up. And when he looks down... And then he looks back up at you. You see a face that you recognize. And it is the man who originally hacked you at the Lonely Cord. You see the grizzled beard. You see kind of like the wrinkled face. And he just smiles faintly and he goes, Well, hello, dear. And we're going to cut back over to Nathan. <laughs> Eventually, there is kind of like a uh, a commotion outside. You've listened to this a few times. It's like kind of like a changing of people keeping track. Um, you have no idea exactly how much time has passed. And there's the voice of the robot as it comes. Prisoner, Atlas. Decision made. And it kind of pauses for a second as if again being hacked. And then it gets halfway through a word and the word shifts. And it says, corridor to the left. Follow to the T junction. Take the right. Elevator pad. Code one. Five, seven, third floor. 
The door springs open and immediately you're met by sterile white light. The There are no guards in sight. You see other doors that line the hallway uh, and they all have like similar keypads to the same one as yours with small little cylindrical holes that allow light in. And you realize this is all probably just like solitary confinement. And you see a hallway that goes both right or left. All right, for the first way I'm going is left. Okay. Down the corridor. So, yeah, you start <laughs> hurrying that way. You come eventually, the the lights are dim and they kind of light up just ch- 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 as you start to make your way. Um, you hear a few voices from inside some of the like uh, confines, like what sounds like somebody scraping their fingernails against the wall. You come to a T-junction where you can like see left or right. What do you do? Well, you're at the T-junction, I turn right. Okay. As you start to turn right, I need you to, McKenna, can you please roll a percentile die? 58. Door opens up at the other far side of the junction opposite of you. Sounds like just two people kind of talking about their day and you just hear them go, yeah, and I, what? Hey, you there! And your footsteps, you start to kind of like pick up speed as you're running towards the keypad and the voices behind you say, hey, stop, stop! Uh, and shortly after that, you hear one of, you, like you hear like the sound of that, someone like muttering into some sort of key thing, and there is um, like a faint like little like beeping on on the walls that you can hear that goes. Uh, you get to the elevator and you see the keypad for the elevator. Uh, type in one three five seven. Okay, you get in. Door starts to close, and the one of them fires. Uh, a bolt in and I need you to make a dexterity saving throw 14 burst against the back of the wall sending sparks as the rest of the door closes you hear the pelt of like two more <laughs> and then elevator music kind of like starts slapping comes on. floor 3 you s- slap the button for floor 3 you see that there are at least 9 other floors uh, and then the elevator starts to move very slowly with this music is there anything you want to do as you're making your way up there? Ooh, you know what? Are there any railings, like, in the elevator? Yes. All right, I'm going to attempt to rip one off. Okay, make an athletics check. <laughs> Let's say 13 or higher. Four. Nope. Plus six. Okay. You, Ten. <laughs> you got... You, one is... It's welded too tight. You have enough time to m- try and do another one with disadvantage. Okay. I'm saying it's because I was cramped up in a little hole for all too long. I had to stretch out the muscles. 12 plus 6, 18? Yeah, because I got 12 and 15. You rip that one off. As the doors start to open, the doors open just enough that you see uh, a guard with his back towards you, and you can see a bunch of monitors on the screen. His helmet is to the side, and you see like a crease of like kind of raven hair kind of cut short and you can see that he's like uh in the middle of like eating an apple and as the doors open the rest of the way he kind of like turns and looks at you in surprise you can see all of your confiscated items behind him in like cages and he goes and he reaches for his gun i'm going to charge him with my bludgeoning tool (laughs) i'm going to smack him upside the head with it so you kind of like hit him at, with the side of the railing, part of it kind of clipping the side of his forearm that he barely gets up in the way. He kind of tumbles to the side, raises his gun up and fires just a small little handgun at you. It ricochets off the side of the wall with a <laughs> um, And one of the things that you notice is that there is no beeping on this hallway. Uh, you see just in the back of the monitors, you can see the two guards uh, that we're chasing after you, trying to like open up the elevator, but the elevator isn't like is just beginning to like descend. As you can see, the doors close behind you. I also need you to make a perception roll. Natural one plus two. Okay, and with that, we are going to cut away as the as you raise your the bar up. The camera kind of like follows the bar up and sideswipes to black, and then over to McKenna 
as the bearded man from before who hacked you at the Lonely Chord is standing there, the facade of his hacking done. And he goes, Well, I believe it's about high time we made acquaintances, isn't it, Moonmaker? And who might you be? Well, you can call me Thirsty. Now, if you want the backstory, this might be not the best place to have it. Is there a place you might recommend other than here? Yeah, I can think of one or two. But first, why don't we leave? And you have a way to get me out? After hacking my neural link? I got in here, didn't I? May the odds be ever in my favor. We can hope the same for your companion. Oh, he'll be fine. And with that, he sideswipes one of the keys across the thing in the wall, like, comes down. Uh, and he looks the other way, back at the entrance, and says, It's not going to be long before he finds a vandal stuffed away into one of those closets, deceased. So, I know that it's rather cliche, but there is a way out that way. And he points back behind you, and you see some grating built into the side of the wall. And he uh, goes, my dear, if you wouldn't mind pummeling your way through that. Can I fit through there easily? Yes, it's big grating. Okay, then yeah. Thirsty, do you happen to have my stuff? Mm. Depending on how good of a person your friend is, we will see if it's gathered or not. But you're a bit of a way from that. So, please, dear, throw your back into it. I need you to make an athletics check as you go and try and slam your way through the grating. Eleven. Okay. Eleven. The grating uh, starts to crumple. <laughs> I need Atlas to roll a percentile die against you. We are looking for a seventy or higher. Sixty-one. I need you to make another athletics check. Thirteen. You break through, and just as the the metal grating goes. Like falling into the chute underneath it, and you see as it slides down a narrow passage. That's when the door opens up on the other side, and a man comes through and he goes, Ooh, Did you? Did you? And his eyes go wide as he sees this strange man and you escaping. And he goes, Oh, pulls out the gun and he goes, St- Stop! And he fires it straight at you, both you and the man, and I need you both to make a uh, dexterity saving throw, please. Eight. Bolt slams into the side, and, and then the the uh, older bearded man goes, oh, yeah, it's just a flesh wound, darling, and he pushes you straight down, and he dives in after you, and you guys find yourself falling, 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 slipping and slipping and slipping, until there is no longer ground beneath you, but you're like falling through air, and you finally like realize you are falling into a chute, and the chute then gives way to the ground below, and you realize that this building must be built on a platform and open up down below you guys. The only thing is, is below you is a partitioned like wall that goes all the way around and some sort of dark, murky liquid. There's trash everywhere within it, and you fall into this trash chute. Nice to meet you. Thank you for the rescue, and again, who are you? This seems like a decent place to meet your acquaintance. Oh! Then he pulls off like some like garbage off of his face and out of his beard, and he goes, oh. I would like to hope that I'm a friend, but that remains to be seen, and you being in their custody makes that rather hard. Come on, we need to get out of here. Find the door. And we cut back as you guys start wading through the (laughs) trash um, to Atlas with the bar raised uh, to bludgeon this person. What do you want to do, Atlas? If I'm going to drop the pipe going for an old school kind of thing, I'm going to like try to grapple him. So he tries to pull away. You almost kind of like Wing Chun, like lock the, the, the wrist and hold him in place. I'm going to choke him out. 
he tries to fight you. He's kind of pushing some of his the inner arm up against you. There is a uh, quite a bit of a lack of training compared to what you've had. You can go and try and choke him out. I'm going to need you to make an athletics check versus his constitution. 14. Eight. So he goes... <coughs> He manages to get one kind of arm on the inside, pushing your arm out. You hold him in place. Uh, he kind of tries to break free again. Um, I'm gonna get just a rear naked choke and wrap my like legs around him to like flatten out his body so he can't use his legs to like push against me. Okay, and as you do that, you there's a clatter as you bring him to the ground and knock him quite a few of the things. His pistol falling to the ground. You can try and choke him out with advantage. Thirteen. You watch as his face turns purple. And then blue, and he's at the point of passing out. Do you want to go further? Yep. And eventually, the hands kind of like they're pushing against you as much as he can. It gets softer, softer. You feel the beat of his heart quickening and then slowing. <laughs> and the last bit of his breath just is gone. Everything sinks, becomes rigid and you're able to let go as he slumps to the ground dead. On him, there's a pair of like data chip keys. One of them is like a uh, like floor access key as well as access to the items in the room. As far as the room goes, you have now uh, knocked over his game of cards onto the ground. You've knocked over a few essential items. Um, a cup of coffee lies on the side, and then you see at least uh, a half a dozen monitors, um, as well as like computer access, and then uh, not just your equipment, but McKenna's equipment and a few miscellaneous things held within as well. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna put all my stuff on, and then uh, I'll gather McKenna's stuff. What you do find in there, though, is a large crystal shard. When you hold it into the air. You suddenly looking through it, you see yourself choking out the man in front of you. You lower the shard, there's nothing there but the dead man. You raise it again and you watch as the man dies in front of you. It seems to be showing you like some images of the past, like recent past. The other that. thing that you find is you find a gold chain necklace that has a, it looks like a coin that has been encrusted around the sides with like red and white gems. And it has the face uh, of what appears to be like a gray on it, and then some like words written in, in like the gray's like language around it. A pocket, uh, yeah, a pocket that one too. Okay, and then let's see. In the miscellaneous box, due to time, you find that some random items that have been like confiscated. Of one of them, you find blueprints for a body modification of some sort. Uh, okay. um, and you find a vial of uh, sedatives and you look up as there's a, like a faint alarm starts to like come over whatever was suppressing it and starts to fill the room. You see like movement in some of the window and some of like the screens as uh, you can see people coming to like the stairwells and you glance around at the room. You can see a stairwell to the easterly side of it. Whoever like helped you has seemed to have stalled the elevator, but only briefly because of the elevator opening up to the floor you were just on. And now there are about four more uh, protectorates or officers heading up there. Um, and lastly, you look up on one of the central Im like imageries and you see, you see someone that you recognize. And if only by his eyes, you see the yellow slitted eyes the person from the temple and he is a green-skinned tiefling light reptile marks to him um has a shock of white hair and is still dressed in kind of like some of the similar clothes and seems to be sitting in an office looking at some sort of a map and it looks like he's contemplating something very deeply uh you get one last image as you watch it's like what looks to be like a lieutenant or something kind of comes into the door. And we cut over to McKenna 
and the man, you, you guys find a gated door that like kind of like allows like some of the like black liquid to kind of come in, but would also like release a lot of like, would, would release someone from this area, probably for anybody who has to come in and do maintenance down here. Um, and there is a keypad as the man kind of runs over and says, well, that'll be my specialty, starts messing with it. That is probably where we will want to leave off on this game. Cool. <laughs> so. All right. What is Alice going to do? <laughs> yeah. What is he going to run or fight? That's, I wonder uh, what people are going to assume he's going to do. <laughs> I think he should take a peek at that map that the guy's looking at. I just know to leave. Yeah, Alice's personality is uh if like if it's fight or flight, it's usually fight. I know. <laughs> yep. Oh. Thank you for listening to this episode of Starlight. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe. For early releases, exclusive RPG content, and other bonus material, check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Starlight Adventures. And to reach us for questions to be aired, email us at the Starlight Adventures at gmail.com. See you next Tuesday, spacers.